If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so the first Sunday of a new liturgical season always has a mess up. That was it. We'll try again. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Hear the commandments of God to the people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God, our neighbors, and ourselves. Most merciful God, God, we confess confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by by what we have have done, and by what we have have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, 
and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join in reciting a portion of Psalm 25 as found in today's voice. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My, my God, God, I put my trust, trust in you. Let me not, not be humiliated, nor, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And you teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love. And for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the Lord. All paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, forgive my sin. For it is great. A reading from the first letter of Peter. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey when God patiently waited patiently for the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with the angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And then he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. So there are events in our lives that shape us and we remember forever. And it occurred to me that there are two types of events that happen. There are events that are felt by the community by your local church, by your city, by your country, or your world. And we can point to certain events like this when people say, where were you when Pearl, Har Pearl Harbor happened? Or where were you when Kennedy was assassinated? Where were you when 9-11 happened? And then there are personal events, things that affect an individual or a family group, that are just as important and shape you. And these events are passed down to generations that come after you. And they carry on those lessons and those stories, even if they weren't alive for them. For me, growing up in the Kalamazoo area, one of those events was when the tornado came through Kalamazoo. And I remember growing up as a kid, hearing stories about this storm coming down Michigan Avenue and the destruction that happened. And I could just imagine in my head as a little boy this great storm, and for me, Kalamazoo seemed like a big city, these giant buildings being torn apart. And my family would tell me stories about my grandfather. His office was in the, uh, at the time, the old Kent building, today the Fifth Third building. And he was on the top floor, and my mom and aunts and uncles would tell me about how he stood in the window and watched this great storm come through Kalamazoo, refusing to leave even though those he worked with asked him to move. Not probably the smartest move ever, but this became legend. Now my grandfather never told me this story, and those who were around him never told me this story. It was a secondhand story given by second-hand sources. But for me, it became informative nonetheless. And this summer happened to be the 40th anniversary of that tornado that came through Kalamazoo. And I watched the local news broadcast, and they replayed the images of that storm coming through. And you could see the elementary school with the roof torn off, Cars flipped around, buildings with every window knocked out of it. Bronson Park, just a few yards from our front door, with every tree, trees that stood for hundreds of years, knocked down. But then something else caught my eye. The sky was a bright blue color. It wasn't like it was when I was a boy and I imagined this storm and the dark clouds and all that. It looked different. And one person that was interviewed talked about they saw a rainbow, and then that gave them hope. 
And then further as I watched this news broadcast, I seen people in the background helping out each other, digging through the rubble, looking for belongings, sweeping out storefronts, boarding up windows that had been busted out, and the community was healing. And when I think about our first lesson today with Noah, we have somebody who none of us probably would have picked for such a great task that he had. He built this boat, and then the storm came, and the waters rose, and everything they knew, and everything they loved, was being washed away. And there in the storm, not knowing what it would end up like, they didn't have a sail on the boat to direct them, they didn't have our modern day GPS to tell them where they were at and where they were going, they were at the mercies of the waves and the wind. But God was with them. And when the storm subsided, God created this covenant with all of the earth, with every creature, that that type of event would never happen again. And in times when you're struggling, he would send a sign, a bowl in the sky, to remind us that God is with us in this journey. And when we look at the gospel lesson today, it amazes me how these two stories tie in. They start out at a different point. Jesus is having this, what we tend to call a mountaintop experience with the Holy Spirit descending down upon him. And this voice coming from heaven saying, this is my beloved. And then you see immediately Jesus is driven out into the wilderness. It seems like quite a turn that happened in just a few short sentences. And we're told that when he is in the wilderness, he is tempted by Satan, and that there are wild beasts and animals that he's around. And if you've ever been out in the woods, even somebody should experience a sound that even a small animal will make creates that moment of fear in you. And I believe that Jesus went out into the wilderness to experience what it is to be fully human, to experience these moments to be in that wilderness place, which we all are in at certain times of our lives. But then we also see that the angels serve Jesus, that God doesn't abandon Jesus in these times. And he's not alone. It is an unfortunate thing that happens that some of our Christian brethren will tell you that if you believe in God enough or you're a good enough person, that good things will happen to you and the bad won't. And I can tell you that in our tradition, we don't see it that way. We don't see it in our scriptures. We don't see it in our tradition. And we don't see it in the logic of the world around us. Hard times happen. Bad things happen. But the lesson of this is that God is with us in that journey. I have the sacred honor during the week to serve at our hospitals. And what I witness every day is people who put themselves and their families at risk to be with those that are most vulnerable, the sickest, those that need help the most. And I believe that this is the Holy Spirit inspiring them to be that person that holds their hand, that talks to a loved one on the phone that can't visit at the hospital, that they are being those angels on this earth. This recent time on social media, I don't know if some of you have seen or not, but our homeless population has hit the news again. And there was a group that had sprung up, it seemed out of nowhere, who wanted to help out the homeless encampment. And although they didn't seem to have a core leadership group, 
they had the same vision, that they weren't going to let their fellow humans suffer alone. And they put out requests for clothing, for tents, for sleeping bags, and for firewood, and they helped tend the needs as the weather got colder. And they worked and pushed until there was warming centers and helped those who were most vulnerable get to their shelters where they can be safe. And I believe this is another evidence of God being with us and being with the most vulnerable. As I stand here, we're at the beginning of Lent. And it has been a year, almost a year, since we've been in lockdown. And I can remember when we first shut down in March, there was hope that by the end of Lent, by Easter, we would be able to gather again together. And that time came and passed. And then we had hope and that we would be able to gather together during the summer. And we were able to do that. We were able to meet out in the yard. We were able to gather together for a short period of time. But then as the cases rose again, we had to go back to lockdown again. And then we said, hopefully we'll be back together by Christmas. And we weren't together yet for Christmas. And now here we are a year later. And none of us could have seen this. But throughout this time, I have seen God with us. I've seen St. Luke's reach out to one another. I've seen the push to keep our ministries going, keep partners getting furniture out to those who need it, the diaper bank to get the diapers out and grow and become this prosperous ministry that we know the Kalamazoo community needs. All these things we have kept going during the pandemic. And I believe that's because the Holy Spirit has inspired us and led us in this journey. So my challenge for you this Lent is to look about you, although it may be hard, and see in what ways God has been with us. In what ways has God been with you personally during this journey? Amen. Let us proclaim our faith, which covers the earth and spans the ages, by reciting the 19th Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate with the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified and was crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Every Sunday is a feast of the resurrection. More than life after death, Christ's resurrection reveals God's loving desire to welcome us fully into God's own life. In this Lenten season, we remember that God's self-giving love gives us courage to address the flaws and failures in our lives and in our world. We pray for the world's economies, for management, sales, and labor, that all people may have meaningful employment and all of life's necessities. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and, and for, for those, those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. We pray that the nations of the world will work together for the good of our environment. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. We pray for the sick and the suffering, especially Patty, Otis, Braylon, Heidi. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. We pray that faith will cease to be an occasion for violence, hatred, and war, and global respect for all religion increases. We remember Mary the God-bearer, Luke and John, our patrons, and Margaret, Eric, Polycarp, Matthias, Emily, John, Fotini, and George, whom we commemorate this week. We pray for Michael, our bishop presiding, our standing committee, and diocesan staff. Randall, our priest, Greg and Michael, our deacons, Chaplain Barrett, and all the ministry people of God. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. We pray for the mission and ministry of St. Luke's Church, seeking always to put our spirituality into action. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, which we now name silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We give thanks for our rich history, the promise of spring, and our life in Christ. For those celebrating birthdays, Jody, Elijah, Tom, Morgan, Patty, Beth, Elizabeth, Anne, Ellen, George, Julie. Those celebrating wedding anniversaries, Pam and Helmuth, and those celebrating baptismal anniversaries, Diane, Scott, Patty, George. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, remembering especially Daniel, Mary Elizabeth, Lydia, Sandy. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. O oh God, you are dauntless love. Keep alive in our hearts that adventurous spirit which makes us scorn the way of safety in order to do your will. Grant us, O God, to be worthy of those courageous souls who in every age have ventured all in obedience to your call. Through Jesus Christ, 
in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though we cannot consume the Holy Eucharist at this time, we thank you that we have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, May we embody your desire and be renewed for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Before our blessing, I'd like to take a moment for a couple of quick announcements. The first being to thank our wonderful brass trio for special music today. Thank you all very much. I also want to say that we will be on the first four Tuesdays in March at 6.30 holding a Zoom uh, discussion session on the last four of the eight Sarah Rubel videos on race and Christianity in America. In the fall, we watched the first four, and since then, Dr. Rubel has finished and produced her other four videos. Um, they're each about a half an hour long. 
You can access them on YouTube simply by going to YouTube and typing Sarah with an H, Rubel, R-U-B-L-E, in the search bar, and they'll come right up for you. Um, if you haven't seen the first four, they're worth watching. They're really, really good. And then we're inviting you to watch on your own the last four, and we'll discuss one each week on the four Tuesday evenings, the first four Tuesday evenings of March. A flyer and more information will be coming out later, but I wanted to let you know that will be one of our Lenten offerings this year. Also, please be aware that um, the uh, service Stations of the Cross is on YouTube and the webpage uh, and is available for you to watch whenever it is useful and convenient for you to do so. Uh, and you can find that and all of our videos on YouTube by typing St. Luke's Kalamazoo in the search bar. Bow down before the Lord. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.